talk about the Constitution. Some of you have heard something like this. This is going to be a bit different, but similar, because it's the same Constitution. So let's get to it. What's Liberland? You may ask. Liberland is the freest country in the world, or it's going to be it when we develop it properly. It is an uncompromisingly libertarian polity. We believe in freedom, and we believe in the fruits of freedom. That means that we want freedom because we think it's a great way to live, and it's moral, and it's just, and also because we know that freedom brings the kinds of fruits in economy, in good governance, and you name it, which we want to produce in Liberland. Because we like freedom, we don't like big government, governments. So we have a lean, small government, a night watchman state, as Robert knows it and others have called it. And the project's call, sort of call sign is to build a Singapore of Southern Europe, a hub of technology, innovation, and a great help to all the people who live here. So how do we do this? We start with the basic principles, which we fought it into our constitution. What are the basic principles? Well, they, we didn't make them. These people have, and a lot of other people. Uh, this is Ludwig von Mises uh, and Rothbard, and this is the guy who created Homestead. So, what did these people, do these people have to, have to teach us? They teach us that liberty and property are intimately connected. That means that you cannot be truly free without being secure in what you own. And this has a philosophical dimension. John Locke, eh? which John Locke has, has also um, extrapolated upon. Because you should own your own being as the first property which you own. Because without self-ownership, what are you? You are at best a slave. And who else should own you than yourself? Because you are dependent on yourself. Without owning yourself or being yourself, without having yourself, your mind, body, and all the rest, you wouldn't be able to act. And so you own your own being, and so you are free. You own your own actions, and so you are a person with protected integrity. You are a human being worth of respect. So why we begin with property? Actually, we begin with human dignity. Uh, how do you gain property in something else than in your own being or on your actions? Well, you mix, just like your lot would say, your labor with the things in the world. And if those things are as so yet owned, you will gain the thing. And this is homesteading. And from this all stems the right that you have full ownership of what you own, which means that you can take it away, improve on it, as if it was kind of your own being. Because you can do this with yourself, you can improve yourself, you can study, you can learn, and we create this fiction that you can do this also with the world things in the outside world. So we kind of derive the meaning of ownership from self-ownership. And this is the basis of our constitution, the first chapter. And it ends with the non-aggression principle, which is courtesy to uh, Mises, uh, Dr. Mises and Professor Rothbard. It is the, one of the cornerstones of property that you, uh, own, you have only the full rights to ask, act on your own property without asking others. So if you want to act on properties of others, you have to ask them. That's it. And if somebody infringes on your property without asking you, then that's aggression. So we call it non-aggression principle. Simple as that. This sounds really simple. However, we see that not all people are willing to uh, act in this way. People aggress on others' property, whether by negligence or by ill intent, every day, basically. So, uh, philosopher Nozick has, uh, has formulated that one of the ways how to protect the non-aggression principle is to have a state, a minimal state. And we believe in that, because we believe, remember, we like small governments, we don't like big governments. So, we have built a state, the main and primary purpose of which is to protect the property of those who want to have their property protected, but who can't protect it themselves. In other words, to prevent the situation where might makes right, and also undue damage. For example, if you're not at home and there is fire, 
and somebody should extinguish that fire. So that's, that's the minimal state. And why is it important? Why do I have this here? That's the Maslow pyramid of needs. And this is the argument of uh, Dr. Nozick that uh, there are many people living in a state. And they have all many needs. And the only needs they can sort of agree on are needs like security or like uh, sustenance. And in the libertarian state, you may recall, how do you get sustenance? By welfare? No. You get sustenance by being your own welfare, by working and by acquiring, using your property. And so you will have it protected, your property, and that's the best welfare you can have, right? I hope so. So next to this, we also define the politics of the state, sort of. We have s uh, several basic uh, policies which allow us to be this way, neutrality, peacefulness, respect for international law, like friendliness, good neighborliness, and least but not, uh, not last, last but not least, sorry, the respect for the natural and cultural culture heritage of this beautiful country. And I hope you notice, this is a great place, and we want to preserve it for the future generations. Now, this is important. How do we finance the state? States usually finance themselves on a, at a gunpoint. Well, not directly at a gunpoint, but there is a gunpoint, eventually, if you don't pay your taxes. Not in Liberland, there is not going to be coercive taxation in Liberland. We're fleshing this out, how to make this as smooth as possible, because the administration has to finance itself, but not against the property rights of others not breaking the non-aggression principle. We don't want that because the point of Liberland is keeping this principle, so why would we coerce anyone? Now, how do we, how do we rule? We will rule using a, a divided government into the classical Montesquieu powers. What are those? J judicial power, legislative power, executive power, okay? We begin with justice. A strong judiciary, added by a Supreme Court, will be the safeguard of liberty because that's the only organ which can change your rights and duties, which can protect you from, well, other people if they infringe on you, but also the government. So that's why it's the first and most important power. And it will have a direct power to remove regulations and to safeguard the fundamental rights. The Constitution contains a set of fundamental rights. We begin again with property rights, like not to be confiscated, to be able to move so that you can enjoy your property, to have personal integrity, to have privacy. It's really important. Privacy, your own domain, where it's nobody's business what you're doing there, uh, with a, unless you're infringing on someone else. That's the beginning of freedom in practice. Next, you would have the right to self-defense. We had that in the basic principles, and we're telling, we're telling the government how not to infringe on this basic right. So for example, you can bear arms, oh yeah, and you can use them to defend yourself in your own property. You can also help others to defend their property. Like, this, this doesn't have to be true liberal. You can do it privately, okay? You could even have a private police. Um, and you will not be conscripted in the army. And then we would have the classical rights and freedoms. Equality before law, free, uh, freedom of commerce, very important. That's a very, very important one. Free speech, privacy. And ban of slavery. And last but not least, we have several rights which pertain to the quality and the nature of the government. It has to be transparent. Again, it will not coercively tax you. And it shouldn't uh, counterfeit money, which is what all governments do. Like, they print money. Liberland won't print money. The Constitution doesn't allow it. And if so, the judiciary comes, and it comes to protect you. It comes to stop the government. That's it. You've gone too far. So you will have an advocate in Liberland. That's called a judge. Please use him. Now, this is about the legislature. Legislative power. Who is the legislature? In a free country. Well, the people are the legislature. We have direct democracy. We cut the minimum. The, all laws have to pass through the referendum. The referendum is instigated and voted in by you, the citizen. You, the citizen, also propose laws. Now, there is an element of representative democracy called the Congress. Why do we have the Congress? Because not all the people want to vote themselves, so they may want to be represented and voluntarily give parts of their power to those they trust. That's your choice. That's not a must. And also because we believe that people who are professionals 
will have some kind of a continuity of know-how, and so those people will be able to uh, present better, higher quality material. Of course, always, even from those experts, or maybe experts sometimes, the people, the citizens, are the final arbiter. That's how it works. They only have a little, a little, little higher chance of passing the law. I can, I can discuss it with you later, but there is, in principle, only one legislative process, and that's the referendum. That's the direct democracy, and that's your own power. We call it lean legislature. Now, this is about the executive, as you can see. And a big brother may be watching you in your home state or country, but it won't be watching you in Liberland because it won't be able to. It won't even have the ideas to watch you because it will have so little, so little resources and competences. Our constitution is not very kind to the executive. The executive must be there. It's the one branch which actually protects your property because there's the police, there's the firemen, and so on, headed by something called a cabinet, which is the government. But it's very limited. We have four ministries, and those four ministries have very uh, have, have preset competencies from the constitution. You have to change. You would have to change the constitution to change those competencies. Also, no more no bureaus, organizations, agencies without a law. The ministers and the prime minister who heads that government, the cabinet, is fully responsible to the cabinet. The cabinet can dismiss them. And what about money? That's the second. Second uh, question here with responsible republic. The money is in good hands. In the best hands we, we could think of. We call those people the senators. They together put, uh, make a body called the Senate. The Senate is a body of the biggest investors and supporters of Liberland who have done the most and who have vested the most of their own resources into Liberland. And we believe, and I think found it, if you, if you look, look at how you think and how the world works, that those people have the best incentive to make the greatest decisions for the country. And so they have certain special powers. Not, not that much, but they do have powers. They do have powers to dismiss regulations which they see as um, unprofitable and bad for their investment, for the whole project. And also, they are the ones who can be the final arbiters on the budgets of the country, or well, on the spending, rather. Budget is made by the Congress, but the spending has to be agreed by the Senate. If they don't like a piece of spending, it's not going to happen. And that's how they can safeguard their investments and your piece. And the president is selected by them, and the president has one additional power, and he can decide who will be a judge, who will be, because the other, other branches nominate these officials, but the president has to accept them. He's like the final arbiter again, right? Yeah? This, this, this responsible branch, this, this part which controls what's going on, has the, has the power to say the final no. And we're getting to the end here. There is not only the Constitution. We're drafting laws. And we're trying to make a sort of make your free state kit. We put it open source on GitHub. And we believe that useless laws weaken the necessary laws. So we have to only draft those laws which are absolutely necessary. And it's what we are doing. And I'll show you. These are the examples of what we're drafting citizenship law, process law, real estate law. These are all the necessary points in which we should agree before we're going to settle the country, before we can build something together. And we want you. What do I mean? This is an open call for help. Do you have some legal expertise? Do you know some lawyers? Do you know anyone who could help us make this legislature great, better? Well, we'd be very happy to hear from you. And we're very happy that you listened to me. And I'm very happy, of course. And I, I hope we'll see each other in Liberland very soon.